Okay, so anything, any questions about like, uh, Kerberos? Okay, so let's just get started on WEP. We won't uh, get through this, but uh, just to uh, get some of the basic ideas here. Uh, okay, WEP. Uh, so, okay, our next two protocols are wireless protocols, and they both have lots of flaws. It's not impossible to make a secure wireless protocol, but these are good examples because they have lots of interesting attacks. Okay, so wired equivalent privacy. So that implies you're trying to make the wireless LAN as secure as the wired LAN. Okay, now how secure is the wired LAN? Well, I love this quote. Okay, so this is from Tannenbaum's book. It says the 802.11 standard prescribes a data link level security protocol called <coughs> WEP, Wired Equivalent Privacy, which is designed to make the security of a wireless LAN as good as that of a wired LAN. Since the default for a wired LAN is no security at all, the goal is easy to achieve and WEP achieves it, as we shall see. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so how does the authentication part uh, go here? Now, Bob is not actually a server here. Bob is the wireless access point. The protection, okay, the protection that, that you get in WEP is only from the, the client here to the wireless access point. Once it gets to the access point, whatever encryption, integrity, all that stuff is undone and the plain text data is sent out on the network. So we're just trying to protect the wireless part, okay? So there's Bob, the uh, wireless access point. Here's a client out, out here. They share a symmetric key. Now, there's only one key, right? The wireless access point has one key. What does that mean? Well, it means everybody uses the same key. <laughs> okay, Alice, Bob, Char not Bob, Alice, Charlie, Dave, everybody who wants to talk to the wireless access point has to know the same key. Already this doesn't sound very good to me, okay? Everybody sharing the same key is not a good idea, but that's the way it works. Uh, the key K seldom changes, if ever. Why is that? How hard is it to change a symmetric key? Just go up to the access point and change the key. That's easy. Yeah, all the users have to change their key too. That's hard, okay? And you don't just send them an email with the key, right? That's probably not a good idea. You go around individually and plug the new key. So too much work, never change the key. Okay, there's, okay. here's the uh, basic authentication protocol. The <coughs> client shows up and there's the access point and says, hey, I, wanna, I want to authenticate, sends you a challenge. What do you do with that challenge? Encrypt it and send it back. What could be easier, right? Okay, so uh, you have to know the key K, and it can verify that you know the key K. So you're good to go. You're in. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that except for the multiple key right out there. You're not authenticating this, you know, the access point. You're just authenticating the client. Uh, the cipher used here is RC4, which is considered a, you know, a, a, a you know, strong cipher, but the way it's used in WAP opens up a lot of potential problems, okay, all the way from straightforward cryptanalytic attacks that are very practical to uh, other things that we'll see. But probably the biggest issue with WEP, uh, sort of crypto-wise, is that they use a CRC for their uh, integrity check. Now, what's the purpose of a cryptographic integrity check? What are we trying to accomplish there? Why do we do that? Make sure none of the data has been changed. Make sure the data hasn't been changed, okay? Well, a CRC will tell us if the data changed, right? So this is perfectly fine. You can fake it. That's right, okay? Now, for a cryptographic integrity check, we want to be able to detect an intelligent adversary who's tried to make the change. For a CRC, is just an error detection scheme. So if random changes occur, the CRC will almost certainly detect it. But it's very easy to make changes to the data that do not change the CRC. Okay, it's very easy. You can find tutorials online that will help you to do that because people like to break weather. Okay. So um, it doesn't satisfy our definition of integrity check at all. It's an error detection scheme. It's not a cryptographic integrity check at all. It wasn't designed for that purpose. It doesn't work for that purpose. Okay. Perfectly fine for error detection, but it's not an integrity check. Got that? Okay. Okay. 
So, uh, integrity, so, so the bottom line is, uh, well, it actually gets worse, okay? So, uh, it gets worse, yeah. So, okay, so this integrity check really gives you no cryptographic integrity check whatsoever. And it's even worse, okay? Because the CRC is a linear operation. The encryption with the RC4 is a stream cipher. That's a linear operation as well. So you've got these two linear operations. So the bottom line is you can actually make changes directly to the cipher text without knowing what the plain text is. You can make changes to the cipher text so that the CRC doesn't change. Or you can, you know, yeah, so you can do that. That's kind of crazy, right? Because now I can go and make changes to the cipher text. I can, and the CRC still checks, it still looks right. When you decrypt it, you get a bunch of garbage, and you say, well, I guess that's what Alice intended to send, right? Because <coughs> it checks, okay? Uh, of course, it gets even worse if you know what the plain text is, or you can figure it out for, for some reason. So the bottom line is it's not a cryptographic integrity check at all. OK, there's other problems by not having an integrity check, by not having a legitimate integrity check. OK, suppose this is kind of a, a cute attack. I really like this one. Suppose Trudy knows she sees some packets, right, that you sent to a web access point. OK, she knows, or she can guess, the IP address of the destination. Where are you sending these packets to? Well, that IP address is encrypted with a stream cipher, right? So if she knows the IP address, that's the plain text. She knows the cipher text. She gets to, she gets to calculate the key string, OK? Because that's how you encrypt, right? You take the IP address, you XOR it with some key string. You know these two guys? You can XOR those two guys together and get this. OK, so now you know the key string. Well, make up your own, you know, IP, make up your own IP address, like maybe Trudy's IP address, XOR with that key stream, so when Bob decrypts it, that's what he's gonna get, okay, and replace, replace this guy for this guy, and change the CRC or do it in a way that doesn't affect the CRC. And you can do that because there's no integrity check. So that's pretty good. So what happens if you can do this? This packet that was encrypted, destined for somebody else, and sent to the access point, the access point gets it with this change made to it, decrypts it, and sends it to Trudy. Oh my god, that's just the best crypt analysis in the world. Okay. So it's big problems if you don't have uh, integrity, big potential problems. Uh, okay, so we've got this long-term uh, key K. Uh, 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 this is probably a good place to stop before we get into this uh, initialization vector.